We're going to have a look at port security and how to configure port security in a Cisco switch. We're going to do it all within Packet Tracer. Um, before we get underway, we'll, I'll just want to go through very briefly just some of the theory behind as to why we would actually configure port security on switch ports on a switch. Here's the, the reasoning behind it. Uh, over here, we can have a, in fact, uh, let's swap that over. I'll change that to a pencil, I think might be a little bit easier. Yep, that'll do. Let's imagine we've got a switch over here. And this is an access layer switch, so it connects through to end devices like printers and PCs and that sort of thing. And that will have a number of ports on it, obviously more than that. They will connect into a patch panel because this switch will be, you hope, in a cabinet somewhere. And there's a little RJ45 connector there. Uh, and this patch panel will be in a cabinet as well, so that will be a short little patch lead there. The, the idea of the patch panel is it terminates the cables, so the cabling contractors, when they run the cables up through the walls and ceilings and all that sort of stuff, it'll eventually come out into, say, a wall socket over here that'll have an RJ45 on it as well. Now, that will be labelled, so that could be labelled A over there and A over here. So we know whatever's plugged into here is also plugged into the switch port. If we have my very crudely drawn PC, that will connect into there. So the PC over here is connected into the switch port here. So that's all well and good. Why have port security then? Well, the reason being is because this is plugged into here, but what if it wasn't? What if this was actually an open access port? What if this port was in something like, you know, a TAS state we have a library? What if this was a library computer that was plugged into here? And then someone else comes along with a laptop, for example. It's a laptop, believe it or not. They disconnect this one and plug their own into it. All of a sudden now, this laptop now has got access to the internal network. They haven't have to hack in from outside or anything like that. So that's someone that would intentionally set about trying to gain access to your network. Now, you would hope that you'd have authentications and all other things happening at a, a lot higher level, but at the moment, they're actually in the network. The other issue is that you can have this sort of thing happen. We'll get rid of the laptop there. You can have this sort of thing happen. You may have someone in the office who's a bit of a slack worker. And all they want to do is actually watch Netflix all day on their phone. But the trouble is, is that their phone, uh, they'd have to use their own data, which of course they don't want to do that. So what they do is that they bring in a wireless access point from home and plug it in. Disconnect that, plug that in. Wireless access point, it'll just pick up a thing, connect into the network. Once again, you'd hope there was some sort of way of stopping that, but let's assume that there's not. And then bingo, he can then watch Netflix on his phone. <clears throat> Brilliant. Either way, whether it's intentional or unintentional, it's still a big security risk, which is why if we set security, um, we can't set it here because this is all physical stuff, but we can set it here, which is what we're going to do now. I'm going to bring up a packet tracer that I've been working on. This is a diploma packet tracer. Um, it's fairly complex, but we're not really... You'll notice here that I've got a lot of access layer switches through here. These are the ones that are connecting into the VoIP phones and the PCs and what have you. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I've actually already set port security on all those. I'm going to do it on the branch office, maybe this one over here. These are a smaller branch office that have got a wireless access point, um, tablet, you know, a couple of phones and a couple of PCs. And this is the switch here. Now, I've configured some things on the switch, as you can see here, but I haven't configured any port security. Maybe if I whiz that over there a little bit, might make it a bit better. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to show you how to set up port security. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up for, I'm just going to add in another um, PC here, which will upset my diagram a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to connect it into, I don't know, three. That'll do. Now, let's go back over to the switch here. 
Now I'm going to start configure. I'm just going to configure port security. I could do for the whole lot, but I'm not going to. I have to mute myself every now and then because I've got a cold. Um, so from here, uh, I'm already in uh, privilege mode. So from there, I'm going to go into config T. See if I can type. <clears throat> Now I could do, this is a 24 port switch, this is a 2960 switch, but really you can do it with any of the switches, it doesn't matter. If I wanted to do it on all ports, then I can actually use the range function. So I can actually use this interface range and then say go, I don't know, FA1. To... I could do that if I wanted to. Uh, and that that's typically the way that you would do it. You'd do a whole lot in one hit. In this case, I'm only just gonna do the one. So I'll exit into interface fast ethernet three that's one with that my little pc up here is just plugged into now i'm going to configure the port security and there's a couple of things here i'm going to show you go switch port port security now there are a couple few in fact there are a few options there are more options on real switches than this but anyway for now let's just have a look at this three things we want to have a look at mac addresses maximum violation the mac addresses we can specify the mac address is the hardwired um, address of the um, network card we can specify what mac address we actually want for example we could actually type it in which if we've only got one, that's not so bad. We can just go into that and get the MAC address and type it in. That's all right. Uh, if we've got a thousand of these to do, then and you've got a sense of adventure, then knock yourself out. We're not going to do that. We're actually going to use this one, which is sticky. And what sticky means is that whichever device is plugged into it first, that MAC address sticks, which is where the sticky comes from. The next thing we're going to do is Violate, uh, we'll put in maximum actually first. We can put in maximum and say, okay, how many um, how many MAC addresses can we have on this? Now, it depends on the scenario. You may only have one, you may have several. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm gonna put it as one because I've only got the one PC that it's plugged into. Next thing is the violation. Now, the violation has several options. If we use the question mark again, you can see we've got protect, restrict, and shut down. In the in bygone era, um, it, I used to recommend shutdown. The reason being is because if someone got up to shenanigans over here and plugged something that they shouldn't have been plugging in, it would shut that port down, which means that the only way that they could get their PC back up again when they plugged it back in was to contact the help desk and say something terrible has gone wrong you'd go into the switch and you'd know straight away that in fact they were up to shenanigans or someone was there. Now though, with the advent of VoIP phones, um, it may be really clever to actually shut that port down, but if you've got a VoIP phone connected to it as well, not only does that PC go offline, the phone goes offline. That's not such a great thing to happen in, in a corporate environment. Um, you may be teaching them a lesson by switching their PC off, but if you switch their phone off and all their communications, that's not such a good idea. So Cisco now recommend either protect or restrict. The only difference between the two of them is that restrict will actually, uh, if you like, log or increment any violations. So that when it gets a violation, it will actually increment it each time it happens. So you can actually get a bit of an idea of how many times it's happened. It may only happen once or if it's happened at all. Protect will do the same thing. It will actually stop anyone being able to plug anything else in except it doesn't do any logging so for this one i'm actually just going to set it to restrict <clears throat> and the next thing is the uh, final thing i need to do is actually turn it on which is easy because you just go switch for port security and you'll notice straight away that it'll come up with command rejected and that's because by default these ports are what's called dynamic now you can't set port security on a dynamic port you need to actually specify what sort of port it is. So because this is going to be an access port, it's going off to a PC. I can actually just change that to switchboard mode. 
Now, if I use the up arrow here, go back, switch for port security, bang, it's on. Out of that. Okay, now let's put it to the test. Um, we can actually have a look at that if we do a do show run here. This is showing the running config. You can actually see there's our security all set on that. And that's looking pretty good. If I now bought in, so, and in theory, um, and I can test this out. Let's just, I'm just going to go in here real quick and put a an IP address in there. Uh, and uh, I'll give this an IP address as well. I haven't done anything with these yet, so. Right, that'll do. So in theory now, I should be actually be able to ping between these two. So if I use my little ping tool up here and just ping from there to there, I've got success. So it's all working. And if I go back into the switch, I can actually have a look at the MAC address. I will do show MAC. The MAC address table, I can actually see that that port, that one, that's the MAC address of that PC is connected to Fast Ethernet 03. Okay, let's put it to the test now because I'm actually going to bring in another end device here. And this time I'm going to plug this one in. So there's a couple of ways I can do it. I might actually just go and delete that. And now I'm just going to actually plug this one in to the same port. And let's see what happens. I actually give this one an IP address as well. Um, three. Fast forward that a little bit. <clears throat> sort a bit more. Nothing's happening, folks. It's showing green, funnily enough. You'd think it would show red, but it's actually showing green, but it's not happening. Uh, and if we go in here, let's have a look to what's going on on our switch over here. Change state to down. Hmm, everything's in phase. Change state to up and then change state to up. So in theory, you'd think, okay, it should actually be working, but it ain't, it's just not working. So let's just delete those, let's just try that again. Oh, whoops, <laughs> wrong one. So what it's doing is it's now, it's not shut down, the port's not shut down, because remember we reset it, when we set the, the options in here, we had an option to actually set it to shut down, but we didn't, we didn't want to shut that port down. So it stays open, it's restricted though which means that it, it no longer can, can take traffic. It's useless. What we could do now, though, is we could actually plug this one back in. Fast forward this a little bit because I'm impatient. Okay, so now let's try that ping again. and success, so it's back up again. So someone else has plugged this one in, it didn't work, so they've gone, oh crap, it didn't work. So I'm actually gonna plug this one back in again, so they've plugged it back in and away they go. That gets logged though in the switch, so that we can actually look at that if we have logging set up or anything like that, we can actually see that there's been a violation there, which means that we could go and talk to whoever's down there and say, listen, you know, what have you been up to or what's going on? If it kept happening, then we would be rather suspicious and would say, okay, there's there's problems there. But that's port security. It's very simple to set up. Um, it's highly recommended that you set up port security for all access switches. You don't need to set it up though for distribution layer switches here or core switches. And the reason for that is because these ones are all inside cabinets. They're only connecting other, to other switches or to servers or to routers. They're not the sort of things that anyone's going to get access to these to be able to plug anything else into. It's the access layer here that is the danger. Hope that's been a help. Thanks.